Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be learning more about language politics in the Canadian province of Quebec. Quelle direction le Québec doit-il prendre? After centuries as New France, Quebec became a British colony following a bloody battle at the Plains of Abraham. In 1867, it was one of Canada's four founding provinces, and eventually, French culture, language, and religious freedom were protected by law, forming a distinct populace within the country. However, years of French nationalism came to a head in the 20th century. In 1936, Maurice Duplessis' right-wing Union Nationale party took power and promoted tradition and family values. However, critics labeled the period La Grande Noirceur, or the Great Darkness, due to limits on education, technology, and industry, as well as the power of the Roman Catholic Church. Because of Duplessis' policies, Quebec's French population was primarily working class, while the capitalist class was predominantly Anglophone. 1949's asbestos strike exemplified this, as French miners were striking for better conditions against English companies. Many saw this event as the dawn of a new, modern Quebec. Another turning point came in March 1955, when Montreal Canadian star Maurice Richard was suspended after hitting a linesman. Because Richard was French-Canadian and the NHL was Anglophone-run, the Francophone public saw this as a language issue. The resulting riot in Montreal was one of the first instances the French population fought back. In 1959, both Duplessis and his successor died, so Jean Lesage's liberals took power. Soon, the Quiet Revolution began. During that period, the province was modernized, the power of the church was reduced, the financial standing of French Quebecers was improved, and their identity as a unique culture was solidified. New government organizations were created as well, which served to finance these modernizations. The Caisse de dépôt et placement du Québec was established to manage the public pension plan, and the government-owned Hydro-Québec took over the province's hydroelectricity from private companies. The revolution ended in 1966 when l'Union Nationale regained power, but the changes continued. Soon, a movement in favor of Quebec independence surfaced and was encouraged by a 1967 visit from French President Charles de Gaulle. Vive le Québec libre! The next year, Quebecer Pierre Elliott Trudeau was elected Prime Minister of Canada as a Liberal. He fought for Canadian unity and ensured the protection of linguistic minorities. Around the same time, René Lévesque founded the left-leaning Parti Québécois with the primary focus of achieving a sovereign Quebec. However, a paramilitary group in favor of Quebec independence also surfaced in the late 60s. The Front de Libération du Québec, or FLQ, was seen by many as terrorists. Their violent actions peaked during 1970's October crisis, when they kidnapped two prominent Quebec politicians and murdered one. Trudeau's government was widely supported for its use of extreme measures in stopping the FLQ. How far would you go with that? How far would you extend that? Well, just watch me. The October crisis galvanized the belief that Quebec independence would be achieved through politics and not violence. The Parti Québécois then won a decisive victory in 1976's provincial election. Within a year, the PQ enacted the controversial Charter of the French Language, which came to be known as Bill 101, to make French the province's official language. So the law restricts access to English schools and regulates the language of business, administration, labor relations, professional corporations, the courts, and so on. The Office Québécois de la Langue Française was mandated with upholding the bill and soon became known to critics as language police as they often levied fines against businesses which did not adhere to language rules. Because of this and other restrictions to minority languages, many corporate head offices relocated from Montreal to Toronto and a huge portion of Quebec's Anglophone population left as well. In 1980, Premier Levesque and the PQ held a referendum on sovereignty. These people in Quebec and in Canada want to split it up. They want to take it away from their children. They want to break it down? No, that's our answer. Almost 60% of electors voted to stay in Canada. Even so, when Prime Minister Trudeau patriated a new Canadian constitution in 1982, Quebec refused to sign. Soon, Brian Mulroney and the Progressive Conservatives were leading Canada. 
With 1987's Meech Lake Accord, Mulroney attempted to keep the country together by granting Quebec allowances. However, Western provinces rejected this special treatment and the accord failed. The sovereignty movement became even stronger. In 1995, Jacques Parizeau's PQ government held another referendum on Quebec sovereignty, which failed to pass by less than 1%. Raté, mais pas de Since then, the issue of separation has remained relatively dormant. However, as the province continues to flip between Liberal and Parti Québécois governments, that national question remains a campaign issue even today.